Hello, welcome to our April market update. My name is Denise, the mortgage nerd, and we are going to dive in into all things about what is going on currently with the real estate market as far as home prices, demand, inventory, and then we're gonna jump in and really dissect the interest rates and where we think that they're headed. So feel free to like this video, share it with whomever's in the market. Otherwise, let's jump in. So first things first, I wanna stop, start with the real estate stats, and this is specifically in the DFW area. If you live in another market, I'm happy to run the statistics for you, but y'all know me, I'm a data nerd, so I like to run just real-time current market facts. And you can feel free to take a screenshot of this, but this tells you real time what's going on with the median list price right now in Denton County, which is around 570, um, new listings, the price per, per, per square foot average, average days on market, increases, decreases, inventory. Um, I really like this average rent as well, 2,600, which is just crazy. You can actually get a mortgage with that. Um, so we're gonna dissect this in a little bit more detail, but a lot of people are asking me right now, Denise, I feel like the market shifted because rates have gone up. Is it a buyer's market now? Well, there's actually an index that measures this for us. And what this shows us is that if you're at a 30, that's what's considered a balanced market. If you're closer to a 45, that means you're in a seller's market. And look where we are here in Denton County. We are just under 50, which means we are still in a very strong seller's market. So when you're working with a real estate agent and you're a buyer, you wanna make sure that you learn all strategies when it comes to making your offer stand out for the seller because there's likely going to be multiple offers so it's not just about what's making it look strongest to them but it's how do you beat out the other offers there's lots of things that you can do within the contract um, if you currently own a home we have a great non-contingent loan program but your agent is going to be your quarterback and make sure you listen to them and their advice because every house and every community can be a little bit different and they're going to find out from that other agent what the seller is looking for um, if you're a seller it's fantastic news it means that inventory is still low we're predicting that it's going to remain low here in dfw because the demand is still really really high there's been a lot of buyers that have been sitting on the sidelines and so we're kind of getting that pent up demand if you've been thinking about selling know that you're still in a seller's market but lean on your agent as well if there's certain updates that they think you need to do with the home or staging that's all ultimately to help you get the highest dollar for your home so consider your agent if you have any questions about that or need an agent recommendation we work with the very best here in dfw and i'd be happy to connect them with you um, so where the heck are home prices headed well this chart helps measure for us where we think the prediction of home prices are going and if I had a dime for every time my mother-in-law said that well, home prices are going down, I think I would almost be a millionaire by this point. But we can't make emotional decisions. We can't read the news headlines. Those are usually fear-based. We have to just look at the data and the facts. I always say data is greater than drama. So what this shows us is we've got the line going up right here. And what that means is that this this measures the median price of homes for sale in the market. And if you see this climbing today, that tells us prices and values are typically going to climb in the future. And I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen once we see rates come down. You're gonna see this line go sharp up, kind of like what we see right here. This is what we see when you've had buyers sitting on the sidelines, when these interest rates come down, it's gonna be a competitive battle all over again. So last few things to wrap up the market, I wanna show you guys what the average days on market looks like. This average days on market does depend on your average home price. So the bigger the home, the longer it takes to sell. That's very, very normal. But if you're sitting here right now and you're thinking to yourself, I wanna be in my new home before the school year starts, that means, and you've got a house to sell, if you're looking at a price point of 1.2 or higher, it's gonna take you almost two months to get that house sold from list to close. If you're looking at a house closer to the 665 or 45, you're still gonna be well over that 30 day mark. So it's really important that you know that statistic and your agent, like I said, can dial in for your community because you might think that if you list your house today, it's gonna to go off the market in a week, but it's not 2020 and 2021 anymore. So 
don't worry if it's been a couple of weeks this is showing you the average statistic on how long it's taking homes to sell from a county standpoint um, next thing is is let's jump into mortgage rates so mortgage interest rates are a hot topic we see it all over the news and it is pretty crazy the mortgage rates do change up and down literally every single day but clients always ask me denise when do you think rates are going to come down i don't have a crystal ball to tell you on the exact date of when but what i can tell you with a hundred percent certainty that interest rates are going to come down as we see inflation come down and i can say it with a hundred percent because in years time before us that's exactly what happens. So this red line is the inflation report that goes all the way back to 1971. This blue line is the 30 year fixed rate. These green vertical lines are actually when we were in a recession. And really what this story tells us is that when inflation goes up, interest rates followed. When inflation came down, interest rates followed. So everything that we saw the feds do last year with increasing the federal funds rate it actually was designed to increase the federal funds rate, which lowers inflation, which it can take eight to 12 months for us to actually see the results of that. But they increase the federal funds rate, it's gonna slow inflation down. And then once we see that, we see mortgage rates come down. We are just now starting to see the fruit of that. So again, it doesn't happen overnight, but if you hear that the federal funds rate is going up, that has nothing to do with mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are tied to mortgage-backed securities. They are not tied to that federal funds rate. The, those are more for auto loans, credit cards, um, those types of things. So what the Fed is trying to do is slow spending down, and it has been working even though it's been painful for a lot of us. Um, so let's jump into the mortgage rates. This here is looking at the bond market because I just explained to you that mortgage rates follow mortgage bonds pricing and there's an inverse relationship there. So when we see mortgage bonds go down, like we saw in February, we saw interest rates go up a smidge and then boom, in March, we had the inflation numbers come out every month, the CPI numbers come out and then we saw the line go up and that meant that the demand for mortgages went up and interest rates came down. But take a look at this. This is over the last three months. There's a lot of red and green on this chart. One day it's up, one day it's down. One, one week in the headlines, mortgage rates are up. The next week it says mortgage rates are down. It is the most bipolar market there is. I can say that because my mom is bipolar. Um, but it has been probably the most up and down market that we have literally ever seen in history. Our CEO was just talking, he's been in the business for like 40 something years and he was saying he's never seen interest rates be like this ever in the history of time. We're seeing banks collapse, we're seeing mergers take place. Um, and it's just cause the last few years, banks and mortgage companies had a purchase boom and a refi boom and the margins in the loans were very, very good. And then when these rates happened, the market like refis went from a, a lot to zero. And then everybody halted when it came to buying and selling when those interest rates got up to over 7%. So where are interest rates headed? Well, inflation is headed down, interest rates are coming down. So the good news is, is that we do think interest rates are gonna continue to come down very, very slowly throughout the year. So the question becomes, should I wait to buy a home until the rates come down? Well, again, we could make an emotional decision on that or we could make a factual decision. So what I've done is I've run a side-by-side -side analysis for you. Again, feel free to take a screenshot of this. But what you can see is that in 2021, a house at 550,000 list price sold in our market for a hundred thousand dollars over because there was such demand for homes it was like toilet paper during covid so although the interest rate was three percent which was fantastic you had to bring an additional hundred thousand dollars to closing so this 20 percent down scenario got you a principal and interest payment of 2192 which is fantastic but the bad news is, is you had to pay $100,000, waive appraisal, waive financing contingency, and you had to bring a lot more to closing. In fact, a lot of people who purchased in 2020 and 2021 feel a level of buyer's remorse because they felt so rushed to make a decision. And if you know of any of those people, or you might be watching this and you're like, I'm one of those people, reach out to us. If you're looking to maybe 
get a bigger home, get a better home in a better neighborhood, we can help you strategize to get out of this home and into a better one. But where are we looking at today? Well, the $550,000 home today, you could likely get for $550,000. You don't have to offer an extreme over. In fact, in some cases, you could get a, a seller incentive. It's rare because we just saw it's a high seller's market. So you got to follow your lead on your agent on that. Let's just use an overestimated interest rate of 6.75%, which is about where conventional rates are. If you're looking at a FHA or VA, they are drastically lower than conventional, but your principal and interest payment would be around 28.53. However, you would be bringing a lot less to closing because you didn't have to overbid. So the thought is, is, well, you could lock in your purchase price today. And then what does a rate redo loan program look like in the future? So part of working with the Mortgage Nerd Group is we have a post-closing customer service team so that even when you close on this home today, we're still gonna monitor the interest rate for you and reach out to you when we think interest rates have hit their bottom. And we have a rate redo program that allows you to drop the rate, stay in the same amount of years. So if you're two years in, we can keep you there. You don't have to start all over for zero out of pocket. So you're still locking in the purchase price of 550 because when rates come down, it's gonna have buyers re-enter the market. So imagine in your head, like the bulls getting, when they open the gate and all the bulls rush out, it's like, that's what's gonna happen probably by midsummer. When rates get into the fives, you're gonna see a mad dash of all these people who've been sitting on the sidelines and it's gonna increase that price up. So if you buy today, you're locking in the sales price so that you don't go back to the banana town and we can drop your interest rate for you, which is gonna drop your payment closer to that 2,359. So just know that we have a customer service team, we have the loan program, we're gonna monitor this for you even after closing. What do the appreciations look like for our area? Well, the five-year gain is looking around a 10.63% appreciation. And sometimes people say, well, Denise, in 12 months, my house is only gonna appreciate 1.07. That's not fantastic. You're right, it's not fantastic. Usually the average is around 3%, so it's actually lower than what the average is, but people don't typically buy real estate to live in it for a year. So I like to look at even a five-year metric because that's pretty average of how long someone stays in their home, whether you keep it and you turn it into a rental or you end up selling it. So let's just be honest though, the, the, your one-year gains is not gonna be tremendous, but your five-year gains will be. So this is a chart that we update every single month to let you know where your home is going to continue to appreciate in value. And for my clients who are renting and who are thinking, well, should I wait? Is buying now worth it or should I continue to rent? This is my quick little rent statistic for you that if you're renting right now, let's just assume you're paying a $3,000 a month rent. You could buy a $350,000 home and keep your payment roughly the same. So $350,000, roughly the same, but you're actually owning a home. And I'll show you in a second what that looks like as far as a net worth goes. Um, for a little, about $1,000 more a month, you could get a $450,000 home purchase. And then of course, $550,000 would get you $49.22. This is assuming down payments, FICO scores, all that kind of stuff. I just want to give you an idea. Most importantly, I want to show you this chart. In your first 60 months of renting, you would have paid almost $200,000 in rent. That makes my stomach hurt. Think what you could do with that money, $200,000. I don't know, I might quit my job and go live in like Costa Rica. $200,000 in just five years that you would pay in rent versus if you owned, you would have this much that you would at least have paid towards principal. So every single month when you make your mortgage payment, the you pay the interest, which is a tax deduction, and then the principal amount is kind of like going back into your pocket. So you would have 21,000 or 34,000 back in your pocket from a principal reduction. And then look at your net worth in 15 years. In rent, there's zero because you have no appreciation. But this $350,000 home in 15 years, you would have gained yourself almost half a million in net worth, which is a much better way to get to retirement, to get to your financial goals of maybe I want to leave my job and start my own business. 
The point is, is that real estate does help you build wealth, build savings to reach whatever financial goal that you have for yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed our interest rate and market update. If you know of anyone looking to buy or sell real estate, please reach out to me. I would love to help them. We are licensed in multiple states. So think of who do you know that could possibly be thinking rent is not for them and that they want to explore how much home they could buy or that they want to explore what they could sell their house for. And then lastly, just know that every single week on my website, if you come here to view rates, you can actually get our interest rate report and it'll show you exactly what the 30 year, 15 year FHA jumbo rates are. We update it every single week for you. I also update rates every Monday on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go to at the mortgage nerd. And like I said, comment, like, share, reuse this. If you're an agent or a builder, you can send this to your clients. Thank you so, so much for trusting me with your mortgage news. And until next time, I will see you next month.